Welcome, everyone, to the CodeZoltan channel. The purpose of grounding is to ensure the safety of individuals and property. In our previous video, we covered the basics of bonding. In this video, we will delve into various definitions associated with the grounding system, such as ground, ground fault, ground fault current path, GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, special purpose, ground fault detector equipment, grounding electrode, grounding conductors, ungrounded, grounded functionally, solidly grounded, and impedance grounding system. We will provide further illustrations and practical applications to enhance understanding. So, without further ado, let's dive in and expand our knowledge of grounding systems. Let's start with the definition of ground, as defined in Article 100, as the Earth. In electrical terms, ground refers to the connection of metallic equipment or systems to the Earth. Since the Earth itself doesn't have a terminal, we need to establish connections to it. This is accomplished through the use of a grounding electrode. So, what exactly is a grounding electrode? A grounding electrode is a conductive object that establishes a direct connection to the Earth. In the photo display, you can see a typical grounding electrode installation. Section 250.52 of the NEC outlines a list of items that can serve as grounding electrodes. These include metal underground water pipes, metal in ground support structures, concrete encased electrodes, ground rings, rod and pipe electrodes, other listed electrodes, ground plates, other local metal underground systems or structures. These various grounding electrodes provide a reliable pathway for electrical current to flow into the ground, ensuring the effectiveness of the grounding system. A grounding electrode conductor is a conductor used to connect the system grounded conductor or the equipment to a grounding electrode or point on the grounding electrode system. Grounded, grounding, connected to the ground or to a conductive body that extends the ground connection. Photos show an example of a body that extends the ground connection. The metal pole and the transformer enclosure are connected to the earth either directly or by the termination to another grounding electrode. Grounded, solidly, connected to the ground without inserting any resistor or impedance device. The illustration shows a system that is solidly grounded, where the neutral of the system is directly connected to the ground without introducing any intentional resistance in the ground circuit. A ground fault. An unintentional, electrically conductive connection between an ungrounded conductor of an electrical circuit and the normally non-current carrying conductors, metal enclosures, metal raceways, metal equipment, or earth. As shown in the illustration, if a circuit with a 100 amperes load is connected, one of the causes of ground fault is damaged insulation in conductors. Once this damaged conductor touches the metal parts of any equipment a ground fault will occur. Furthermore, some of the causes of the ground fault are electric equipment in wet OR damp areas, faulty tools and appliances, etc. Next in the definition is the effective ground fault current path, which is defined as an electrically conductive path from the point of a ground fault on a wiring system through normally non-current carrying conductors, grounded conductors, equipment, or the earth to the electrical supply source. Going back to the previous circuit with 100 amps, the green line is a ground fault current path, if this is made of conductors, metallic raceways, metallic cable sheets, electrical equipment, and any other electrically conductive material such as metal, water, and gas piping, steel framing members, stucco mesh, metal ducting, reinforcing steel, shields of communications cables, grounded conductors, and the earth itself. This equipment grounding conductor is an effective ground fault path. While ground fault circuit interrupter is a device intended for the protection of personnel that functions to de-energize a circuit or portion thereof within an established period when a ground fault current exceeds the values established for a Class A device. A photo shows an example of a GFCI circuit breaker and outlets. These devices apply to Class A circuits. This device operates at 150 volts or less to ground. Further, this ground fault circuit interrupters trip when the ground fault current is 6 mA or higher and do not trip when the ground fault current is less than 4 mA. How does GFCI work? Shown is the typical circuitry and components of GFCI. During normal condition, or no ground fault in the circuit, the current in conductor L is equal to the current in conductor N, and these conductors are passed through the sensor. This sensor monitors the current in the conductors L and N further this sensor also connected to shunt trip. In case of a ground fault, there will be a current in the grounding conductor that results in an unbalanced current. The sensor will detect it and send a signal to the shun trip to shut off the power. By shutting off the power, GFCIs can significantly reduce the chances of electrocution. Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, Special Purpose, SPGFCI. 
is a device intended for the detection of ground fault currents, used in circuits with voltage to ground greater than 150 volts, that functions to de-energize a circuit or portion of a circuit within an established period when a ground fault current exceeds the values established for Class C, D, or E devices. These special-purpose GFCI devices are classified based on voltage and the quality of the equipment's grounding path. A Class C is intended for circuits not exceeding excess volts AC. Class D is intended for circuits with one or more conductors over 300 volts to ground in a reliable ground path to ensure the voltage across the body will not exceed 150 volts. A Class E is similar to a Class D but has a conventional equipment grounding system or double insulation, however, the GFCI device opens very quickly before the current has a magnitude and duration through the body that exceeds the limits for ventricular fibrillation. The photo shows an example of a special-purpose GFCI, courtesy of Littlefuse the special-purpose GFCI category is for applications where equipment grounding is provided by the NEC or where the voltage is greater than 150 volts. Specialty GFCI's trip when the current to ground has a value of 15 to 20 mA. The special-purpose GFCI is required in the swimming pool and for the lighting equipment in the horticultural area. Ground Fault Detector Interrupter DC, GFDI. A device that provides protection for PV system DC circuits by detecting a ground fault and could interrupt the fault path in the DC circuit. The Ground Fault Detector Interrupter, GFDI, is a safety device for a photovoltaic PV array. If the array becomes shorted to ground, it disconnects the PV system from the batteries. The photo shows a GFDI device. In the illustration, the 80A GFDI moved to the input with an additional disconnecting means, and 100A circuit breakers on the output to reduce the nuisance tripping. This photo and illustration are courtesy of Outback Power. Ground Fault Protection of Equipment, GFPE. A system intended to provide protection of equipment from damaging line to ground fault currents by operating to cause a disconnecting means to open all ungrounded conductors of the faulted circuit. This protection is provided at current levels less than those required to protect conductors from damage through the operation of a supply circuit overcurrent device. A GFPE is a Class B device that protects electrical equipment from low-level ground faults but does not provide protection for personnel like a Class A GFCI device does. The GFPE requirement is that the voltage to ground is more than 150 volts. This rules out the typical 120-208 volt system where the voltage to ground is 120 volts. In a 277-480 volt system, the voltage to ground is 277 volts. Furthermore, a GFPE can be set up to 1,200 amperes with a time delay of up to 1 second for ground fault currents of 3,000 amperes or greater, which would be lethal to a human being. Equipment Grounding Conductor A conductive path that is part of an effective ground fault current path and connects normally non-current carrying metal parts of equipment together into the system grounded conductor, to the grounding electrode conductor, or both. The illustration shows an example of an equipment grounding conductor. In another illustration, the equipment grounding conductor, EGC, connects the non-current carrying metal parts of equipment and metal enclosures to the grounded conductor at the service. Section 250.118 provides a list of items that can be used as an equipment grounding conductor including, a copper, aluminum, or copper-clad aluminum conductor. This conductor shall be solid or stranded, insulated, covered, or bare, and in the form of a wire or a bus bar of any shape. Rigid metal conduit. Intermediate metal conduit. Electrical metallic tubing. Listed flexible metal conduit meeting specific conditions. Listed liquid tight flexible metal conduit meeting specific conditions. Flexible metallic tubing where the tubing is terminated in listed fittings and meets specific conditions. Armor of type AC cable is provided in 320.108. The copper sheath of mineral insulated, metal sheathed cable type 1001. Type 1100 cable under certain conditions. Cable trays is permitted in 392.10 and 392.60. Cable bus framework is permitted in 370.60.1. Other listed electrically continuous metal raceways and listed auxiliary gutters. Surface metal raceways listed for grounding. The grounded conductor refers to a system or circuit conductor intentionally connected to the ground. In the provided illustration, a corner grounded delta configuration is depicted, where phase C is connected to the ground. Therefore, in this case, conductor C serves as the grounded conductor. Another illustration showcases a polyphase Y system, 
As per the definition in Article 100, the neutral conductor is the conductor connected to the neutral point of a system, intended to carry current under normal conditions. Since the neutral point is intentionally connected to the ground, the grounded conductor in this illustration is the neutral conductor. However, it should be noted that the equipment grounding conductor is also grounded. An informational note clarifies that the equipment grounding conductor is indeed grounded but is not considered a grounded conductor. This note has been included to assist electrical practitioners in distinguishing the functional differences between grounded conductors and grounding conductors. Both conductors are grounded, but they serve different purposes. One of the distinctions is that grounded conductors are designed to safely and continuously carry electrical current, while equipment grounding conductors only carry current during a short to ground fault condition. In Article 100, it is defined that an ungrounded conductor is not connected to the ground or to a conductive body that extends the ground connection. Therefore, in the delta corner ground system, phases A and B are the ungrounded conductors. In the polyphase Y system, phases A, B, and C are considered ungrounded conductors. It is important to note that the neutral conductor is not always a grounded conductor unless the neutral point is grounded. In the accompanying photo, a typical panel board installation is shown, where specific color coding is required. The equipment grounding conductor must be green or green with yellow stripes. The grounded conductor should be white or gray, while the ungrounded conductor should be distinguished by colors other than white, natural gray, or green. Alternatively, a combination of color plus distinguishing marking can be used for the ungrounded conductor. The term, functionally grounded PV system, has been revised to, functionally grounded, by the format used in Article 100. This change was made because the definition is referenced in multiple articles, such as Articles 705, 706, and 712. Let's define, functionally grounded, now. It refers to a system that has an electrical ground reference for operation purposes that is not solidly grounded. The accompanying illustration depicts a functionally grounded system. The ground connection is established through electronic means internal to an inverter, which also provides ground fault protection. This configuration allows the equipment grounding conductor of the PV circuit to be connected to the inverter's grounding point, eliminating the need for a separate DC grounding system. The inverter's grounding point is then connected to the grounding system or grounding electrode of the residential facility or building. Functionally grounded systems serve various operational purposes, such as ground fault detection and addressing performance-related issues for certain power sources. On the other hand, an impedance grounded system refers to an electrical system where the system's neutral point is intentionally connected to the ground through an impedance device. This is typically referred to as a high impedance grounded neutral system. The illustration provided showcases a typical connection of an impedance grounded system, where the neutral point is linked to the ground through an impedance device. However, it's crucial to note that this system is only permitted for three phase AC systems rated between 480 volts and 1000 volts. Additionally, specific conditions must be met, including the installation of ground detectors, the prohibition of line to neutral loads, and the requirement for qualified personnel to maintain and supervise the system. In the same illustration, the impedance grounding conductor is depicted. This conductor is defined as a conductor that connects the system's neutral point to the impedance device in an impedance grounded system. Thank you all for watching.